Hey you, welcome back to my channel. For those that are new here, my name is Rachel. For those that are not new here, welcome back. It's so good to see you. So I am about to do a live video here at the doll shop today, but I just got ready and I did a little bit lighter of a look, didn't use as many products or as many layers of things, and I filmed it for you. So we're using my tried and true cover girl. We're using some of the products I've shown you before. And then at the end of the video, I also showed you how I styled my hair with a flat iron today, how I did these curls with a flat iron. So if you liked this look, then stick around because I'm showing you how to do it from start to finish. And if you enjoy this video, definitely share it for your other fashionista ladies that might like to pick up a, a trick or two from my makeup regime. This is what I've been doing for the last 20 years. So if you enjoy it, uh, thanks for sticking around. I love you. All right, here we go. Okay, so face is off and now we are going to put on our makeup. So again, I want to do a more of a casual look today. Some days I like to put on tons and do a big look and some days I some days I just wear moisturizer and sunscreen maybe a little mascara and you know it's just it's whatever you feel so we are here live at the doll shop hello good morning so good to see everybody thank you so much for tuning in I love hanging out with you so and nobody's here I get here early in the morning sometimes seven 7 30 8 o'clock I was never like this before but I am now where I get here really early to get things done so let's get to makeup but first of all wanted to show you guys my drink now I love to do this this is two shots of espresso right here just over ice and I use um, these kind of straws they're, they're like metal straws you can get them on Amazon or lots of places but it reduces waste Make sure to get reusable straws. And then I like to take my Premier Protein. Chocolate's just definitely my favorite right now. And I put it over top the espresso. And I put it in there. Remember when I showed you this drink for, it's good for doing doll shows or estate sales when you need something on the go to give you that jolt of caffeine and some protein? This stuff's like rocket fuel. I had two of them yesterday. I buy, I buy them at Costco in big cases. So anyway, there it is. That's good. I like to use espresso because I like it to be very coffee tasting. If you just mixed iced coffee with it, then it drowns it out. So anyway, okay, so let's do our makeup. Now, I am going to, just so we can get this out of the way, I'm going to pin this my hair back. So what I am going to do also at the end of the video is show you just how to do some easy curls with a flat iron. So this is gonna be a little bit lighter of a look. So I am going to use something a little bit lighter on my face. One thing I am using right now that I really love is Laura Mercer Tinted Moisturizer. This is very, very, very light. This is a great option for if you, if you're not, if you don't want to put on a bunch of foundation or a bunch of concealer or a bunch of heavy, heavy type makeup. You saw me, you saw me use different things in my other videos that, that were a lot heavier and I do like that look sometimes when I am filming or I am doing something where I want more coverage or if my skin is red do you remember I was having that kind of red outbreak there for a while and I just wanted more cover now I'm putting this on make sure to get your neck make sure to get your ears I'm putting this on and you can see that it's not making like a huge, a huge difference, but it, it does in person. But again, it's very light. It's called tinted moisturizer. So I did moisturize my face before I left the house, but this could just serve as your moisturizer and your foundation for a lighter look. I do like this brand a lot. It's very light and very good, but there are a lot of brands out there got to have my trusty paper towels and I just I put it on I I have all this fancy spongy makeup applicators and all those things but there's nothing that works as good for me sometimes as your good old hands you can wash them really easily and it just I that's basic that's pretty much and I always wash my it, I always do my makeup like right after I got out of the shower so my hands are clean and I wash my hands a lot but but 
it's just, I really like to use my hands. Give me a comment if you use your hands as well. So this is the, this Laura Mercer Tinted Moisturizer is, it has an SPF 30, which is super important. I always want to use something that has an SPF on my face. It's called a Natural Skin Perfector, and this is the porcelain color. So if you are white toned like me, I'm not like ivory, but I'm not quite a medium. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a medium light, if not light, most of the time. So now we have that on, and it just feels good feels good. I feel like I don't have too much too much on. So the next thing we're going to do is some eyebrows. Now I have talked to you about my eyebrows before. My eyebrows are microbladed, which means they are they have they have pigments that have been put on, put inside them to give them shape and definition a lot like a tattoo, but it's not as permanent as like a permanent tattoo. It does fade over time and you have to get it redone about once a year. I am using a brow pen right now that's just a pencil to kind of give me a little bit more. You do have to get it done once a year, get it re retouched up about once a year. It is expensive, but it is so incredibly worth it. And if you're getting basically a tattoo put on your face, you're not going to want to go to the $25 special place, you're going to want to go to somebody that is likely hard to get into because they are so booked and um, you're going to be paying several hundred dollars. I think mine were, mine were five or six, but it has been so worth it. It just, it just really frames your face. It gives you a Good look. So when you're filling in your eyebrows, you don't really want to start right out here, kind of like I just did. You're going to want to start further back up here because you don't want it to look like they're drawn on. You want to start further back and then just kind of make some little wispies as you move forward. So my eyebrows have faded since my last video. Not faded like in a bad way, but they kind of calmed down a little bit because again, the last time I did my video, I think I had got I think I got them done like the day but the day or two before. So I just used that brow pen. There's a lot of brow pens out there. This is by a brand called Il Maquillage, but I don't recommend to necessarily buy it. I got this in one of my makeup subscriptions, so I use that. But I will only tell you products that you need to buy, like if you need to buy them. And they're usually products that I have used a million times and for many years. So the next thing we're going to do to make the eyebrows look more natural is we're going to use the Benefit Gimme Brow volumizing gel. This is one you have to buy. This is, oh, it's so good. And you can get the little one if you actually go to the makeup stores like Sephora or Ulta Beauty. And you can buy the little one, but I just recommend getting the big one because it is just so good. So, because it, because it, what it does is you put on your filler for your eyebrows, but then it, it kind of blends it all in with that brush and the gel and it just makes it look natural. Before, if you met me or if you haven't met me in person, I guarantee you, you never look at me and think, oh, Rachel has has enhanced eyebrows. It, it, it really, or maybe you do, I don't know. All I know is they look really good and you, this is almost empty, so it's not doing as much as the one at home. But anyway, I use number three and it is such good stuff. And you can kind of come out past your eyebrow too to give you a lot. Now, when you have one part of your face done and you don't have the rest of your face done, it'll always look a little overdone until it kind of all comes together. But girl, eyebrows. Eyebrows are everything. If you, if you have drawn on eyebrows your entire life, then... I recommend getting it done. And when you get it done, you don't get it all done at once. They do a little and then you go back usually two weeks later to get more if you want more. And girl, I wanted more. So here, here's my, now we're gonna do some powder. This is the, the Clinique Double Super Powder in matte beige. See, it's all broken. I broke it in that video that I did for you, but you better believe I'm gonna be using every last drop of it all, all broken up anyway. But my friends Lauren and Maya, they were so sweet and they sent me a new one. Wasn't that so sweet? So the reason why I just did my brows 
after I put on the tinted moisturizer is because <sighs> kind of you don't want to have you don't want to get too much on there. It's because I want the tinted moisturizer to kind of um, soak in. So what I'm going to do too is actually just put some of this right on my lid too, just to give me a little bit of a base for the for the eyeshadow that we're going to do. But you want your moisturizer, you want your fur, you want your first moisturizer to soak in, and then you want your tinted moisturizer or your foundation or whatever you're going to use on your face to kind of soak in a little bit. Now I might have to put more stuff on my brows because sometimes when I do it in this order, the brows need a little something at the end to make them pop. And it is, and it is weird doing it in this camera. So, but I think I'm getting good. I think I'm getting really good. Okay, so we got that on. Now what we're gonna do is just a light eye and we are going to use my trusty, I'm gonna go buy a new one probably after work today, but CoverGirl Shimmering Sands. I looked it up and I believe it's been, this color combination has been around since the 70s. It is so tried and true. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the middle one and I'm, this time I'm just gonna put it right on my eyelid there the middle color, the medium color. And I'm gonna kind of bring it up. And right today I'm using this little sponge applicator. I really like using sponge applicators because they are so fast. They work differently than your finger. I don't really like using my finger too much for, for like this part of the eyeshadow, but sponge applicators work so fast and one of the best applicators that I can find on the market or by Clinique. This is a Clinique applicator. I took it from a different eyeshadow thing from Clinique. So let's just get, so we're, we got our little base here. The shimmering sands, what I like about it is it is shimmery, but I don't like eyeshadows that are like sparkly that I used to wear, you know, in middle school. I like to have a little little something, little shimmer shim shim, but not not anything too sparkly. Like I don't wear sparkles anymore. Raise your hand if you used to wear sparkly eyeshadow or if you still do. Makeup is totally 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 about you by the way. So, if you want to leave your house with tons of makeup on, everything under the sun, false eyelashes, rainbow eyeshadow, I just want you to know how beautiful you look. Or if you want to leave the house with absolutely nothing on, but make sure that you have moisturizer with, with sunscreen, I just want you to know how beautiful you look. So wear whatever you want. That's what I do. So I wear, I wear what I wear whatever I want, and you have permission to do the same. So we got that on there. See that? It's look, it's very natural. It's a beautiful look. Now what I'm gonna do is take some of the darkest one from Shimmering Sands. And if it gets a little cakey, just break it up and then grab your shadow. And then I'm gonna put it up here. Okay, so we just took the medium one and we kind of put it everywhere. I didn't bring it all the way to the top, but I'll show you another trick that's kind of fun if you wanna bring the shadow all the way to the top. And now we're gonna take, you don't wanna to get too much. See, I just got a little much on there, but you just keep going, keep blending. Okay, right there in the crease, like up here. And it depend and if you've got different different shaped eyes, just kind of do it for the eyes that, that you have shaped. But I feel like this work, this look pretty much works for everybody. Okay, so it's getting up there in the crease. And I will go check in the mirror to make sure things are kind of looking even. It's kind of hard to and then use your trusty old fingers to kind of okay. Do you see how it's giving me a little definition up there in the crease? Not too much, not too heavy. Just enough. Just enough, but we're going to make that pop. We're going to make that pop with the last trick, which is Now I see I have to break up the shadow cuz there's hardly any left in that first in the first section, which is the the lightest one. So now I'm going to take my finger on the lightest one in the Shimmering Sands palette. This is by CoverGirl. I've been using it since high school. That's been 20 years that I've been using this palette. So if you wanna, woo, that's, that's pretty good. 
I don't usually bring it up here, but I am today just to show you how that can sort of look. So I put a little bit up there on my brow bone, but then my favorite trick is after I've done the, the eyeshadow, is to stick it right on the lid. It gives you that shaded, blended effect. Okay, so I have eyeshadow in there, up there, up there. I'm sure there's technical words for all this, so I'm putting it on my, I didn't, put quite as much on my finger this time on my brow bone area sometimes if you use too light of a color and when I say you me just for my look it just I don't like the way it looks so that's why I usually do none because I think that actually looks best for me but you can put it up there see it, it actually you know it's looking pretty good so we'll see what it looks like after I get on eyeliner and mascara but and then I and then I take that same color and I put it on with my finger so now if you have what you feel like have put on too much white and then you lost your definition, oh no. All you do is now to finish it up, grab your sponge, grab a little bit of that darkest color in the shimmering sands, the darkest one, blow it off so you don't have too much on there. And then let, let's just go right back there in the crease and give us a little bit of that definition back. So it's gonna be different every single time that you do it. My, it's different every day. Every day I do makeup, it's like a different kind of thing. What do you guys think? Is it, is it working? Is it working? You're going to you're gonna see the final project because I am going to be doing a video this morning. But why not? It's so fun to do makeup together. Makeup's one of my favorite things. That's why when I was doing the doll with Robert Tonner, one of the biggest things we focused on was the makeup and the lip and the eyes and the eyebrows and I told I, I didn't tell him but when we were talking about it and kind of designing it and manifesting our grace doll like just in conversations I was like Robert she needs some good eyebrows good eyebrows we don't want any of those little those little skinny things those have been very popular in the past but I, I like I like good eyebrows so after you've done your eyeshadow, you will likely have some that has kind of fallen. You, you, you might have some out here or down here. One thing you can do to just kind of clean that up is just take another pass with your powder. Now remember, if you didn't moisturize and your skin's all dry, you don't want to be putting on too much powder because then it, then it will look cakey. So at this point, what I will do is get myself some eyeliner. So I'm gonna show you the trick for if you're new to eyeliner, doing the wing, is tracing it out first with a pencil. So I just have a brown pencil right here. This is by Charlotte Tiberi, but you can use CoverGirl, makes a lot of great just pencils. And start kind of in the bit middle and work your way back. Okay, once you get that, and then can start moving your way forward like this where you get up to your duct your tear duct kind of area up there and then that'll give you your now if you want like a soup a supernatural look like you could you could just you could almost stop with the pencil eyeliner once you get a little definition shadow on underneath but I am going to do the wing today just to show you but sometimes I just do a little pencil and then that's it sometimes if you want a real easy real casual look and this is a brown pencil you can just do just do a little face stuff do a little brown pencil and then I'm gonna say uh do your eyebrows do some eyeshadow I'm making <laughs> that's so funny once I once I do kind of like once I do a couple things then I then I I, I will do the rest but it, it's not always like the full shebang so do you see what I have there? Now what I'm gonna do is just take a little, I'm just gonna take a little, so what you could even do if you wanted a real light natural look is you could take the darkest one from Shimmering Sands and just give yourself a little definition down there. But I like a little, I like a little bit more than that. So I am going to use, now I, I usually use a, this is a Charlotte Tiberi, but you can use any kind of darker color. And I'm just gonna tap my sponge applicator I usually use a, what do you call it, a Q-tip? 
excuse me. And just kind of give me a little something there. I used to put straight up full fledged eyeliner on you. I'm sure you could see in my photos from two or three years ago. It is so heavy. I look at it now and I think, oh, Rachel, that was so heavy. But at the time, it's kind of, it's what I used to do growing up. And I just thought that that's what I needed to do. And then I realized that it actually makes me look younger when I don't have all of that on. When I don't have all the eyeliner and all the things. A lot of people say I look so young without it at all. And that's that's how I am a lot of the time on the weekends that's how my family's used to seeing me I know I look a lot different with and without it and most of you have only seen me with it because I'm out and about and doing doll things and at places where I'm made up but it's really nice to just have this time with you where we can just talk about it and do everything let's have a drink of our iced coffee it's so good it gives me protein it's kind of on the run Okay, so now I am going to do the eyeliner. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. So if you've traced it on, it does give you a little, it does give you a, uh, a template to follow. Now I can just, oh, oh man, oh man. Now see if I was doing this in a mirror. Yikes. So I shot way high up up there, but I can probably blend it to make it work. And I am gonna do the other one in the mirror just so I can make sure that they work. See, do you, I have a little bit of a mess up, but I might be able to just kind of blend that in and just have kind of a thicker eyeliner today and make it work. So, but that's, that's how you kind of do it. So once you get it traced on, you can kind of you know, and you can kind of see how big you want your wing. There's a lot of ways to do winged eyeliner. I'm sure by tried and true professionals who can give you a lot of great tips. This is just how I do it. So I'm going to go put on my other wing and I'll be right back. Okay, both wings are on and my eyes never to me, like if they look good before you put on mascara, I feel like you know you slayed your eyes because once you put on mascara, oh man, it looks so good. So I'm gonna go put, I'm gonna put on mascara. Most of you know how to do that. So, I, and, and I showed you the trick where if you get little specks, other places, wait for them to dry and then just take a Q-tip and you can fleck them right off. Mascara is one that almost, almost every time I have have some kind of fleck or smudge, but once it dries, it's so easy to get off. So I'm going to put that on, be right back. Mascara's on. What a difference mascara makes. I love mascara. Now, I only put two coats on today instead of three because we're doing a more natural look, but I wanted to show you this. Do you see how I smudged it right there? I'm going to wait until that dries, and then I can just take it right off along with any other smudges that I have. Now, I have a, kind of an intense eyeliner look. I like it. I love eyeliner. But you can do, and this is very black eyeliner, but you could do a brown eyeliner. I love green eyeliners. I love uh, sometimes, my, my cousin once did like a dark kind of maroon and it was so gorgeous with her green eyes. So try different types of eyeliner and just kind of have fun with it. I didn't start wearing liquid like this until probably like four years ago. Before that, I always did pencil but I'll I have some cool pencil looks that I can show you too in future videos so the next thing I need to do is I look good but what what I really need is some cheeks to help liven it up a bit so this is my Sh Shania S-H-A-I-N-A B Miami kit I don't know I don't know exactly Sh Shania B but I've ordered this twice I really like it but there are so many great I uh blush plus highlighter palettes out there so many great ones so use the one that's your favorite and this is a complex culture brush I got this in one of my makeup things it was like a I don't know, at least a hundred dollars I would never uh, buy one that expensive but I got it in my in my box so uh so what I'm gonna do is I like to just grab some of each all three of them and don't put on too much because you can always you can always add more, but it's kind of hard to take things off. Okay. 
Ooh, that's a lot. I kind of like it though. I will smudge it and, and kind of take some off to make it look more natural. See, that's it. That's a lot, I can tell. And you know why it's a lot? It's because I usually don't bring in as much of that third dark one. I usually just kind of use these like lighter pink ones. But now I have to do it to the other side so it's more even. So, and it's okay that it's a lot because what I do is I just kind of go in and blend it's all about blending and you always do like a third or fourth pass here and on your ears i can't tell you how many times you just you get out and then you and then you have like you never want to have that makeup line and it's easy to do even when you have makeup that matches it just happens so just do just kind of get some blending going on see once i blend it then that looks pretty good and especially because i'm doing a video i want to have a little more when you're doing stage makeup and for videos, it's just, it is a little more, you, you do wear a little more. So here we go. I'm just going to take, I take the same one. I should have, I should use a different highlighter one and just give a little highlighter. And then I like to take a little highlighter and kind of put it up here. Gives you that, gives you kind of a sparkly. Now, if you use too much highlighter in some of my videos, I've seen where I've worn too much highlighter and I'm like, oh girl, Girl, you got so much highlighter on, but it's okay. It's okay because we're because it's we're we're just having fun. Now let's see if that's dried. Yeah, that's pretty much dried. See, it's dried and it just flakes off. And once you kind of get your flakes, sometimes you'll have to go in with a little bit more mascara on the bottom. Okay, so this is a quick, more natural look using lighter products it's not as heavy and I think it looks pretty darn good now I am I decided to do sometimes I do lip liner but most of the time I don't because it just it's just so much <laughs> you know you put on the lip liner and then you but but if I'm doing something glam or if I'm on stage or something like that I will do lip liner but usually what I'll do for lips is put on some Moisturizer for the lips. So this is just some Burst Bees Moisturizing Lip Balm. I hate when my lips look dry in person or in videos. Sometimes if I wear, if I don't put on the lip balm and then I wear something too dark, it just does not look good. So that's, uh, yeah, I like that. And then for the lipstick, I'm going to go ahead again with the 434 Promenade by Christian Dior. It's a great berry, but I have some great Revlon lipsticks that I will share with you very soon. This one's really expensive, but if you want to treat yourself to a great berry color, I recommend this one. Okay, I make a few passes at the lips. Now, here's a tri trick which most of you know. But to avoid getting it on your teeth, once you once you kind of get it on, okay? You see that? That was kind of like on the inside of my lip and that could have gotten on my teeth, which is the worst, right? And then I just clean it off. So make sure, make sure you got clean fingers before you do that. And it's a great tip for making sure it doesn't get on your teeth. So now we are going to give give a, we're going to, what my mother would call it, bump up our hair. Bump it up. We're going to do some bumping. So I washed and blue dried it this morning. Ugh, I hate, I already got a little clamp there. So we definitely got to bump it up. Can't do a straight look today, but we're going to curl it a little bit with a flat iron. So you're, you're going to love this because if you're traveling and you only have a flat iron, you can do a straight look or you can do curls. And flat iron curls, they hold a lot tighter, I feel. I like to, I like to use curling irons and flat irons I use them both they they give me two totally different looks but the flat iron one gives me a little bit more of a kind of a beachier less controlled looking curl all right it's going to heat up we'll be right back the the flat iron okay now we're going to bump up our hair and what I am going to do I usually put on lipstick last actually because my I don't like my hair to get into my lips 
Okay. These are great little clips. This is by Dry Bar. I got them at Nordstrom Rack. Now, if you've never used a flat iron for curling, you're in for a treat. It works really well. I like a flat iron. This is the G one that I keep at work. I like flat irons that have a longer, a longer ceramic thing that go to like here, because you can just do so much more. But we're just gonna show you. So I am gonna, what you do is you take a piece of your hair, not too much, and you're all, and you're gonna grab it from the front and you're gonna make this motion. You're going to go this way. You always want to curl away from your face, not into your face, because then that looks like Nellie Olson. You want to go away from your face. Think Farrah Fawcett, like going away. All right. Now I start about right here. Okay. As long, I don't want it to look like, like a china head doll, like sausage curls. I want it just to kind of have a little something. So, and it's okay if not all of it makes it in there. If you're just kind of trying to do, do a kind of a beachy-ish, not beachy, I don't have beach hair, but you know what I mean. Kind more of a cat. See, see the look it gives you? It's much different from a curling iron. Much different. But I like it. It's a quick, it's quick. In a curling iron, you'll hold it for 15, 20, 30 seconds with a flat iron. It's quick. So I, I'm doing this without looking in the back of the mirror, but I'm just gonna kind of fill around, see if I got them all. These are my some of my favorite dolls, by the way. This is an Oscar hit googly. And these are wonderful Clay and Han, brother and sisters. I want to say, ah, they're model 320, two of my favorites, my favorites. There's the girl. She's bigger than the boy. Ah, love them. Love character dolls. I am going to be doing a video today. I don't know if I said that earlier, so that's why we're getting ready. Okay, so I did a little bit, a little bit of curl. Okay, I'm going to pull down my next little layer. I, I do it in three layers. Do the top layer last. These are great. Okay, kind of pull it down. It shouldn't ever take you super long. I I will do the braid tutorial if you guys would if you would like to see that. I would just have to have Eric help me film it because I just put my hands behind my head and I just start braiding. So okay, so now we got this. I don't start way up here. You start depending on the length of your hair, about halfway down. Okay, pull away from your face, go all the way down, and you got your curl. All right, but you wanna do it fast. Flat irons are a lot hotter than curling irons. But it's okay if it's a little kinda different, and they don't all have to go away from your face. You can mix it up and do a few curls that are a little different, but you, you want them mostly all to go away from your face. But it's quick. If you need a quick hairstyle, and this works on every length of hair, you can use a flat iron for short hair as well. You do want to get a flat iron that has good quality ceramic tiles. So don't be using... Don't be using a cheap flat iron for this. You want the ceramic tiles, not metal tiles. It would, it, it burns your hair, it's not good. So if you are gonna do this look, invest in a decent flat iron. Wait for a sale or something. They're not, I, you can get them on sale. You just have to wait for a sale or you can maybe even get them like, I don't know, used on eBay or something. I, they're around $100 or more for a good one, but. They last a long time, unless you take them to Europe, like I have in the past, and rest in peace. Because even with the converters, they just kind of short out sometimes. One time I went to Europe, and when I was in Australia, they were like limping along for the whole trip. And then by, I think, the last day is like when they, uh, they died. You can just tell when they're not, when it's not kind of working. Okay, so we're just going to get...
we're doing gonna do the top here now we're gonna tease it a bit which is gonna bring it all together teasing kind of brings it all together I do start a little higher up on the on the top guys because I like a little bit more a little bit more on the top see what I'm doing here okay I am gonna start higher up because it does give me some lift Sometimes I'll just grab and do like one small one a little bit tighter to have more of a curl on the top. You kind of guide it through, but it's a quick movement. Sometimes if you have an unruly curl, you can go in and redo it, but don't redo it too many times because then it's just too much heat on your hair. Whoops, there went beloved Belindy. She's out of here, poor Belindy. Now, I only do this look maybe once a week. The other days I will do dry shampoo. It's been so good for my hair not to do this every day. Like when I, when I have events or during, during the summer fling, I did this every day for like two weeks and I, it just took a big toll on my hair and, and the color because of all the washing and the heat styling and it's just, it's what I have to do for my job, but in between, I really just don't. One of my favorite, one of my favorite styles is the braids because I, I wash it, I let it air dry, and then I put it into braids. It's like the, the nicest, see that guy, I have a little bit of a bump there, that's not bad, but it, it, the braids is like one of my favorites because it's just so gentle on my hair. Let me do one high up there. We got a lot going on here today. I'm gonna do a talk. It's not it's not gonna be a rant, but it's kind of a talk. I've been I've been needing to do it, wanting to do it. So we're gonna do that today. And then we have a big bear expert coming to the doll shop soon. So we're gonna kind of get ready for that. The Vince, if you are if you bought a Vince Noel outfit from me, they are supposed to be here by this weekend for me. And then I will ship those out first thing next week. So Vince is an incredible sewer. He is extremely picky. His outfits are absolutely incredible, but they do take time and they're taking more time than he thought. So it's worth it. And thank you for your patience. Okay, so I got, got myself a little something. What do you think? It's kind of fun. Uh, I still have this kind of, do you see that bump right there? I don't like that bump. So we're going to just kind of redo this one. I don't like to do it too much because I already did it once. But, okay. So I went, of course, to the back and grabbed Linda's supplies, which I will go put back. I will ask, I will ask her where she got this. It's for the dolls. We use it for the wigs, but I use it every day. Now, don't tease too much. You don't want to have a big rat's nest up there. You just want to have, see, do you do this, okay? Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna grab another section below it. Okay, now I'm gonna grab another section below that. This doesn't actually work as well as a teaser comb. It's, it's, if you have a teaser comb at home, that works better. So I just gave myself some lift in the back. Now I'm gonna give myself some lift on the side. Don't go too crazy. You can start higher up. Now I have very fine hair. If you have fine hair, if you have thinning hair, you can make it look a lot more by giving it a good tease. You can get more by teasing. You know what I'm saying? So, now once I've teased it, now you don't wanna have like a big old, the, one of the worst looks is when you got a big old tease sitting back there. So you wanna take a little bit of a brush. Again, I'm using our doll hair brushes here. And just kinda, Just kind of brush it over. Okay. 
Another one of the things I like to do, give it a little, give it a little lift too, is take my hairspray, put it on my fingers like this, and then and then kind of push it up like this. Oh yeah, girl. Yes, girl. So look at this. Look at this one. That needs done. Okay, you grab it and then you do pull it back. Oh yeah, I like that, that's cute. My mom used to hate when I had like flyaway ends like this, but I kind of like it because I like to have a little tight curls and loose curls and all kinds of things. So you'll wanna go through and just make sure that all of your ends are bumped up, you got curls. If you do one by itself, it's gonna be much tighter than if you grab a whole section of hair. So that that's good, I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to go put on my top. I might take a little bit more and go right here. See what I'm doing? You just take that hairspray and put it in your hand and kind of work it in up there. Oh yeah. What's the saying? The, the, that's why her hair is so big because it holds all of her secrets. But I think that's for, for like hair that's like this big. I don't have enough hair to do that, unfortunately. Eric just walked in, so we're going to get to filming. I'm going to change into my top, and we're going to get going. So hope you guys enjoyed the hair segment. have my shirt on. This is from Trina Turk. I really love it. I bought, I liked it because of the neckline. Just look at the look at the neckline. Isn't that cute? The only thing I'm missing is pearls. I need some pearls. Um, I actually have these sitting on the toilet. Oh, look at poor Belindy. I'll fix her later. This might, but this this might be a little much. I love these, but no. I think because of the neckline, I actually probably don't need anything. If I had like a really small string, that would be okay. But once I get, once I get the hair the way I like it, then then you give it a final, then you give it a final spray down. You want to get rid of all those flyaways. It's one thing Greg Ortiz taught me when he did my hairs. Cause I used to have a lot messier of a look and a lot more flyaways. And then when he did it and he really smoothed them down, it looked so good. Okay, I still wish I had a little string of pearls, but that's okay. I could probably find some here in the doll shop. But I am going to now go do my live, my live video. So it was so fun getting ready with you today. I hope you enjoyed these tips and I can't wait to see your finished looks. Bye.